Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and thanks for finding us here. For those of you who are new, uh, we talk a lot about coins, coin collecting, and just the fun of the hobby. And this is a beginner video just talking about the uh, differences on peace dollars. This is the dollar coin that was made from 1921 and into the mid 30s, 35, with a gap year in there, a couple gap years where they didn't make them uh, 29, 30, 31, 32. 33. So there's a pretty big gap during the uh, depression when these coins were not made. So kind of a cool thing. Went through the roaring 20s, got cut off during the uh, depression, and then kind of came back again in the in the mid 30s. So one of the things that I want to talk to you about is just the fun of these coins, but also um, you know you can really find nice coins and not that expensive. So the peace dollar. One of the most common things that people ask me about a peace dollar is why is there a, a V there instead of a U in the word trust? And I actually have people all the time reach out and say, hey, is that an error? And uh, I just tell people, no, that's a stylized V. Uh, the V is for victory. These coins were produced coming out of World War I. And also they're called peace dollars because they say the word peace right on there. One of the original designs for this coin that did not get used actually had the eagle standing on top of a, uh, a sword, and they decided not to use that, that particular design. So the eagle is the sun rays, emphasizing a bold brand new day, a day of peace. So you know the coin design is literally dependent upon exactly what the world events were at the time, which is kind of a cool piece of history. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about coin grading. So usually when coins are in these holders here, they call it coin grading, coin slabbing, uh, slabbed coins versus raw coins. A raw coin is a coin that's not in a holder. There's a few basic grading companies to look at. NGC, this is one of them. PCGS, CAC, and ANACS, Annex is the, the kind of the four that you can look at, especially for coins that are in this price range. What's fun about this is you have these really pretty coins that are Mint state, MS stands for mint state. Uh, the mint state category goes from a scale of 60 to 70. So in mint state 63 coins are kind of considered to be a nice average uncirculated coin. And one of the things that's very tricky about uh, the labels for NGC is their use of S and then the dollar sign and then the one. I find this to be kind of an erroneous way of doing things. The S stands for silver, silver dollar, one dollar, but also it looks like it says that it's a 24 S. It is actually not as a 24 Philly. This is an error that uh, I see people make all the time when they're looking at graded coins. Uh, some of the other grading companies I think do it a little bit differently. They don't have that S on there. So what's fun about this series is that you can collect the uh, second year of series, the 1922. 23, 24, and 25, so those four years, and you can buy nice mint state coins, and usually they're going to be certified MS63 or 64, and they'll probably be 55 to $75 range, something like that that's been kind of a truism for a while, and if the market softens, they'll be even less. If the market heats up, they might go a tad bit more, but generally speaking, they're not that expensive of a coin, all things considered. So one of the things that I kind of want to talk to people about today who maybe have a little bit more experience is the concept of picking up nice peace dollars in these lower grades that are already certified that are kind of a nice value pick. So this is going to get a little bit more into like the technical grading aspect of coins. And that's to say, I look at a lot of coins that are certified and for whatever reason we got this group in and here's a couple of hints about the way these are sometimes sold. Sometimes these are sold by mail order companies that had a really bulk submission. So they submitted hundreds and hundreds of coins. And one of the ways you can tell that something is from a bulk submission is for NGC coins, they've got this little number at the end. That's the submission number. And then that's the quantity of coins that was, uh, this is number 37 on the list. So this coin here was number 78 on the list. And so you can see these are bigger submissions full of lots and lots of coins. One of the things that intrigued me specifically about this little group, you see those coins were graded 64, but a lot of the coins in here are graded 63, and to be quite honest with you, they are as nice as any 64 that you'll see. So it was kind of a fun group because uh, the coins I thought were 
above average even for the grade. So this is like number 97 in the group. And this entire group of coins basically, there, was, there were a few that were maybe just kind of average looking coins. But for the most part, so like this coin here, to me is a more typical looking MS63 coin. This is an example of one. Usually what you're looking at is a coin that's very lustrous, very nice, original, fresh looking coin. But, you know, these were shipped in bags, so they would have big, big groups of coins, you know, whatever, 500 at a time. Maybe it was 250 at a time. Maybe it was 100 at a time. All just in a bag, clashing against each other as they got shipped around. So you see lots of what they call bag marks. That's where the term comes from. So you'll hear the term bag mark. It's because they were shipped in bags. And so you see all these little contact marks. They're really kind of bright and shiny and a little bit distracting even. That to me is a typical 63. And then you look at a coin like this where you have a lot of very, very minor hits and contact. And so all these, these coins are in the same holder grade-wise, 63, 63. What you see quality-wise are two very dramatically different looking coins. And so at any time you look at coins, there's the grade. Lots of times dealers and other collectors will price things based on what this holder says. So one of the things that I tell people to do is you take time to train your eye which means you watch a lot of our videos, but also you go ahead and you look at a lot of coins and you start to understand the difference. And one of the reasons why common date coins oftentimes are undergraded is because they see so many of them that they don't really, what would you say, they're, they don't really look at them that close. I guess I'd put it that way. They'd say, oh, there's another nice one. There's another nice one, 63, 63, 63. And that's kind of the moniker. That is not the right word. That is just kind of, I think, what happens for a lot of these. But what I tell people to do is take your time to look at coins and pick the coin that looks nicer. And so you can see there's a really tremendous difference between those two coins there. And this was actually true, I think, throughout this series of coins that we purchased. Um, I think there's a few dozen that we picked up that the coins just had a nice look to it. In fact, there are some coins here in 63 holders that I thought were approaching the 65 grade overall. But, um, you know, generally speaking, it's very, very difficult on the peace dollar to get an MS-65. It's just kind of a thing where you don't see them that frequently. And what's interesting about that is they're actually, they're, they're really not that expensive in the marketplace. When you look at MS-65 peace dollars that are common dates, they might be $150. Uh, if the market goes up or down, it might shift from there. But you compare that to Morgan dollars, which are usually $50 or $75 more generally speaking, and the Morgan dollars you see in MS-65 very, very frequently compared to how often you see peace dollars. Now in general, peace dollars are much more scarce than Morgan dollars as far as actual total population because the Morgan dollars were made for several decades. And the peace dollars really were made basically for like a decade and a half if you think about all of the, the years they actually made them. And so you're talking about um, production differences overall on scale being very different. Well, I'll tell you what, um, have fun, enjoy watching, collecting, uh, you know, enjoy the videos we put out. If, you, if you're new to us, just go ahead and click on the subscribe button and check out the different videos that we put out. That is on the case. I might as well use this as a teaching moment. And the teaching moment is don't leave food on your counter. The other teaching moment actually is sometimes you will see, see from a distance it looks like there's two spots on the coin, but that's actually just the light shining through and putting a shadow here because you got some schmutz on the coin, on the holder. So you don't want to do that. But uh, as always, we enjoy having you guys around. Take the time to peruse some of the different videos that we put out. And hopefully you can learn from the stuff that we, we put out there for you. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button corner. Inventory is for sale at oldpueblocoin.com. Thanks for joining us.